the Advanced Visual Effects two-part series here at Eat3D.com. My name is Jeremy Baldwin, and during the next few hours we will be exploring many methods and techniques that will expose you to some of the practices used in AAA studios today. In part one of this crash course, we will begin by looking at how the influence of volumes within Unreal shaders can be visualized. Beginning with a Max script example, we will learn how to build a shader that modifies object properties within Unreal based upon their position relative to the world and a world mask. We will then focus on building a material function sublibrary that will make future development fast and efficient. We will begin by creating custom distortion that will help future weapon functions stand out from traditional distortion methods. We will then move on to multiple vertex animation techniques using world position offset to manipulate an object's state in gameplay or cinematics. We will also look at generating fake caustics using world coordinates rather than UVs. This can be extremely useful in situations where large scale effects need to be displayed across multiple objects within the game, yet seamlessly blend together. Next, we will begin creating a few unique shaders that could be useful in a wide range of situations. We will develop an ice shader that has many customizable options for modifying everything from depth color to depth offsets and even melt factors. We will then look at generating fluid-like movements and random seed UVs that will be used to generate many variations of falling dust all from one material instance. We will also look at how to create our own unique dust particulates based off of a noise function and texture information. Utilizing the many options exposed in our material instance, we will generate a unique particle texture and apply that to our cascade model. Next, we will begin constructing a tiled lava shader that uses a custom exponent based fluid map and simple vertex animation. We will then build several variations of this shader to better explore the individual options and their flexibility. We will also take a look at constructing a concrete shader based solely off of world coordinates. Moving to 3ds Max, there will be a brief overview of how to quickly rig a simple holographic mesh and set up its UV space to mask off vertex animation. In Unreal, we will construct a holographic master shader full of intuitive parameters that can be driven by script or code. We will then set up a fully interactive hollow door that will display information to the character based upon player position. We will look at how to divide interactive states within Kismet to create multiple player-based conditions that will allow for random or controlled events to take place. Having this will allow us to create a three-stage process and flexibility over how those stages proceed. Stage 1 will be a player position function that will cause the holographic to be revealed to the player. Stage 2 will consist of several frozen elements and texture swaps. The progression or regression of this stage will be decision dependent. The third and final stage will be the holographic dissipation. There is a lot of ground to cover in this DVD, so let's move on to the first section and get started. 